Hi, yeah. Most of you will know me, but for those who don't, I'm John King, and I have the privilege of being one of the elders on the Elim Aberystwyth leadership team. As a family, one of our favourite TV shows is one that graces our TV screen every night for about three weeks before Christmas. I guess you would say it's one of my guilty pleasures. The premise is a dozen celebrities are placed in a jungle for three weeks and must endure horrendous trials, boredom and overcome interesting social interaction. If they can't cope, they simply have to say, I'm a celebrity! Get me out of here! And they're plucked from the show. Have you ever wanted to shout something similar? I'm a Christian! Get me out of here! Maybe even more so in this present climate. Well, you're not alone. The Bible tells us of many biblical heroes who ask God for help. So many of David's psalms are calls for help. Like Psalm 69. Just hear the desperation in his voice. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters. Their floods engulf me. I'm worn out calling for help. My throat is parched. My ears, my eyes fail, looking for my God. When the powerful Assyrian king surrounded Jerusalem, King Hezekiah prayed, Now, O Lord, O God, deliver us from his hand, so that all kingdoms on earth may know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Even Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, asked for help. Father, he said, if you're willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. There are so many other examples like these, like these, but I want to look at one particular occasion today with King Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 3 verses 1 to 15, reading from the ESV. Solomon made a marriage alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had finished building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. The people were sacrificing at the high places, however because no house had yet been built for the name of the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed and made offerings at the high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You've shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on the throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you've made me your servant king in place of David, my father. Although I am but a little child, I do not know how to go out. Or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of the enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you have been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honour, so that no other king shall compare with you, all your days. And if you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. 
That same account is also covered in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verses 2 to 12. So have a look at that yourself later. You see, Solomon was a good lad. He was recently married, busy building his home, well, his palace. He was building God's temple and the wall around Jerusalem. He loved God, thanks to his upbringing. Although he didn't always perhaps worship God in the correct places or correct ways. Even so, God spoke to him. I guess there's a lesson straight away. Don't judge others on how and where they worship God. He can get through in any situation. So, continuing the story. Solomon goes to Gibeon to the same place where Moses had the tent of meeting. Later that night, God appears in a dream and asks him, What can I give you? Wow! Father God, such a loving Father, who only wants to give us good things, and he asks Solomon, What can I give you? Whatever your situation now, whatever you're feeling, God is saying the same to you, if you would only talk with him, honestly. Luckily for us, Solomon puts a bit of context in the story. He knows how his father David was loved by the same God and honoured the promises made to David. He's experienced it himself. He draws on the past experience. You see, what was true in the light remains true in the dark. We just don't always see it. Then he continues with his issues. He's feeling a bit overwhelmed. I love it how the message puts it. And now here I am, God, my God. You've made me your servant, ruler of the kingdom, in place of David, my father. I'm too young for this, a mere child. I don't know the ropes, hardly knowing the ins and the outs of this job. And here I am, set down in the middle of the people you've chosen. A great people, far too many to ever count. Solomon who's our inspiration for this forethought, humbles himself before God and says, I know you're my creator and that you have a purpose for my life, but I don't know what to do, God. I'm really too we own for all this and I don't feel equipped for the task that you have for me. How easy it would have been to say, you know what, God, what I really want is for you to get me out of here. Get me out of here! such an easy prayer to pray. And you know what? It is okay to pray that sometimes. David said it many a time in the Psalms. But if we're honest, is that because we're focusing on us and the situation where we should be looking to the one who promises never to leave or forsake us, to give us a hope and a future, eternal life in the complete knowledge of him? What does Solomon ask for? to be equipped for the circumstances he finds himself in. He acknowledges God put in there, verse 8. So he asks for wisdom to deal with the situation. Not to be removed from the situation, not for wealth and health, but equipping. Equipping so that he can continue his work of the kingdom. Kingdom Kingdom-focused prayers rather than personal prayers. What's God's response? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. In fact, God was so pleased, so pleased with Solomon, that he put the kingdom first. That he actually said, and I paraphrase, Sure, I can do that. But I don't want to give you that. I want to give you much more than that. I don't want to give you some wisdom. I want to give you loads of wisdom. How about some bonuses too, some riches and honour? And a longer life if you continue in my ways, as your dad did. When God says he will do something, when he promises to do it, you can trust him. It reminds me of what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all those things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. That's in Matthew 6, verses 31 to 33. When Solomon woke up, he took God at his word and went back to worship with his people. We must trust God when he promises something. We must have faith. 
Because that also pleases God. At the beginning of this passage, and at the end, Solomon, Solomon, bleh, 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 bleh. At the beginning of this passage, and at the end, Solomon was worshipping the Lord. Make sure everything you do is done with the right motive and is part of your worship to God. Therefore, what are you praying for in these days? Maybe all you can muster is, I'm a Christian, get me out of here. Maybe it's more of a shout, I'm a Christian, get me out of here! And that's okay. I'm not saying praying for healing across the world and praying individual personal prayers is wrong, but we need to try and have a kingdom focus. How can you best serve God now? It may be that he wants you to rest and wait on him, but that shouldn't mean you stop meeting up with him. It may be that you need to find creative ways of serving him by serving and loving others. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's the promise to the exiles in Jeremiah 29 11. And it's the same promise to you, to me. And then in 2 Peter 1 3 we read, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life, through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. God has given us everything we need for the life mapped out for each one of us individually. If we don't have, we need to ask. If we don't, if we don't get what we asked for, then we probably didn't need it for the plans he has for us. Ask at God right now what he wants for you. What's your role to be right now? Then, if necessary, ask him to equip you to carry it out. One thing for sure, only you can do the job God has planned for you in this current situation. Don't compare to others, and don't judge others. Like in my favourite TV show, the winner is the one who perseveres in what life throws at them. Unlike the TV show, there's more than one winner, and those winners get the crown of life, not a crown made of twigs and berries. And now I'd like to finish with a prayer of blessing from 1 Peter 5.10. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Thanks for watching. Be blessed and stay safe.